I did it. I got married. Guys, I am so sorry that I've been away for so long, but I got married and I spent the last week in Paris celebrating married life. <laughs> This is awesome! Now I am a little bit sick right now, but we are back with some new content and I cannot wait to start. So, let's get on with the video. What's going on ladies and gentlemen? My name is ADC Art Attack and welcome back to a brand new drawing video and <laughs> Can't get enough of this thing. Today's video, I decided we would do something that you have all been suggesting I do, and that is using some kids' supplies. So I went and picked myself up these things. These are big kids felt pencils. Now these are great value for money as yeah, they only cost me four euros for 18 pens, which is pretty damn good. But how do they stack up with my pro markers? Now these are a brand of, let's pull one out. These are a brand of markers that I have been using for the last seven, eight years. And yeah, these have pretty much been my standard go-to markers. They're very cheap and they're just amazing quality. But we're going to see how they match up with the big kids felt pens. This should be fun. So before we get started, I'm going to begin by doing a practice run of these pens as I have not used them just yet. So let's crack them open and see what we're working with. I have chosen today to do a character that utilizes pretty much every one of the colors in this pack, which I think is a great way of testing them out. And yeah, so before that, let's do some scribbles and just see how they work and how well, if at all, they blend. Okay, so right here, I've selected a few blues to use right now because why not? I think they're quite vibrant and they will just be a great way of testing these things out. So let's just see how the black is first. I'm just gonna make a couple of scribbles. Ooh. That nib looks really nice. Really, really nice, actually. So, we're going to do a couple of scribbles just here. And let's just see how is that looking. And surprisingly, there... Oh. Oh. It's sort of... Aha. Uh -huh. I'm sort of um, picking off the paper here. Um, lovely. I don't know if you can see that, but it's sort of peeling the paper off, which looks a bit weird. But anyway, let's carry on. So we're going to slap some blues down. And these colors are amazing. I've got to say, I'm getting some really smooth coverage. It feels really nice. It doesn't feel like it's damaging the paper. Although if you go over it a second time, it's really damaging the paper. Oh, wait, you can actually see it there. It's really damaging the paper. It's, um, yeah, I think blending is probably a... <sighs> blending is a no... Oh, God! Can you see this? It's really just making a hole in the paper. What? <laughs> okay, well, that's enough testing of those. Let's get some pro markers and see the difference. Okay, so confession time. Although I did say pro markers, I kind of use pro marker as a general term. I'm actually going to be using some brush markers as well. They are the same brand and they kind of go hand in hand. It's just up to you what nib you prefer. And seeing as those big felt pens have a sort of brush nib point type thing, I think it's okay to use both of these. I'll get away with it. So I chose colors that are similar to what we've got here. And yeah, let's uh, see what happens when I lay a light color down and... I mean, these are just immediately, you can feel the difference. It's just so much smoother and you can double layer over it. I can keep increasing the gradient, as you can see there. It's just, th this isn't gonna rip the paper anytime soon. I could just do this all day and that paper is gonna be perfectly fine. Do, 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 do. I hope. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so let's just see what happens if we put a, another layer of a dark tone on top of that. Absolutely nothing. As you can see, it blends nicely on top of it and we can even just slightly stroke it into it. And look at that. You get a gorgeous blend. It just works so well. Yeah, really looking forward to seeing what I can do with these big pens. So I think that is enough practice. I know it seems kind of lame, but it's all the practice we need because we are professionals and that is how professionals roll. So let's do it. Before I get started with the coloring and testing, let's do a quick drawing. I've decided in Wolverine as well, he's just awesome. And his color palette is quite extensive. So that's gonna allow me to use most of the pens supplied, which is kind of the point here. So yeah. Now I want it to be a little bit more original than simply just using a reference. So I strayed slightly off of the source material here and changed his head a little bit. I'll also make some personal choices regarding the coloring later, but it's always good to have a source nearby when drawing an established character. 
I know there's a lot of stigma attached to this and a lot of people just, you know, they always say you should draw from your head and things like this, but hey, if you are drawing a character that exists, there is no reason that I can possibly think of that you shouldn't have a reference on standby. You don't necessarily have to draw the reference as you see it, but you should always have the reference there as a guide to, you know, get the character accurate. And while I'm drawing this, before I actually finish this sort of sketch phase thing, I'm using some new fine liners here. They are Windsor and Newton fine liners. I never seen them before, and I found them in Paris. Um, it appears I don't know if they're new or I, I don't really know anything about them, but they're pretty cool. They're really smooth, really easy to use. And later on, I mean, they worked really, really well with the pens. I mean, really well. So. They're pretty good and I would recommend them. This video isn't sponsored by Windsor Newton, although I wish it was. But yeah, let's finish this up and get on with the coloring. So starting off with the coloring, I'm feeling super nervous. That tester really hurt my confidence with these pens due to the damage they were doing to the paper. But I figured I have all the time in the world to do this, so let's single layer and let's just try to be loose with it and just see what happens. The paper definitely needed a good few minutes between layers before applying anything more as the paper was just falling apart stroke by stroke. So it pushed the drawing time here a little beyond what I was hoping for, but I wanted this to be a good attempt. So I'm going to be patient here and I'm just going to work with it and see what happens. I quickly found out early on that blending was just simply a no-go. As we already found in the tester phase, you know, the paper was just not able to handle this or I don't know what it was, but blending was just way, way out of the question. So I had to figure out a way to make this look good. And I figured contrast, if we just use like a heavy contrast thing, we don't have to blend too much. We can give a nice sort of illusion. So I decided to keep the high contrast and, you know, a greater separation between the lights and the darks. This just provided a more vibrant piece that, in my opinion, gives what I like to call the magpie effect. You know, it's bright, it's shiny, and we naturally gravitate to it. And that was my thinking here, to, to give it the illusion of looking pretty cool, when in reality, it's quite messy. I'll be honest, I do this a lot with most of my drawings. I just make them nice and vibrant and bright, and then people are just like, hey, these look great. But then if you pause the video and actually look at them, they look terrible. Confessions of an artist. So the more I'm using these, the more I'm starting to realize a little bit more about them. And I'm starting to understand these pens a little bit more. And I will say that this paper, I don't know if it is the paper, maybe using a higher gloss paper, I don't know, like a marker paper or something will probably work a little bit better. I am using sketch paper here, which may not be the best for markers, but I love using it for my standard markers. So that's what we're doing. But I would say I am adapting a little bit to these. And while they are an absolute nightmare to use they feel amazing they feel like really really good it it's a weird feeling like putting these down on the paper feels so good but the second you go over an area you've already done suddenly it's like drawing on gravel like it's just pulling everything up so yeah this coloring style is obviously something that i'm not really kind of it sort of looks like do you remember predator remember that really negative weird sort of what was that view that you had heat vision something like that Infrared? I don't know. It sort of looks like that. So when I got to the skins, I really had no clue. Like, it comes with some skin tone, and the base skin tone that it gives you is really nice. It is a great skin color. It looks fantastic. However, that's it. I mean, I put the brown on it, and I thought, hey, that's going to look all right. No, it didn't really look all right. It kind of looked... Yeah. So I had to sort of slip some yellow and orange in there, and I thought, hey, it can play off of the yellow of his clothing. Which it did, 
sort of. I think, you know what? I, I still think it looks good. I think it looks all right. I ended up adding some black to it and just kind of spicing up the skin a little bit. And you know what? I like it a lot. So let's get on with the next part of this, which is using my pro markers. This should be fun. All right, so pro markers. Now, what I intend to do here is pretty much mirror the style that I did on the left-hand side, although now that we're able to blend, I'm gonna be trying my best to blend them. But I want to reiterate the point that I will be trying to mirror this on the other side. So the sort of style that I've done on the left-hand side with where the shadows are and things like that, I'm gonna try and mirror those on the other side. I just wanna keep it as sort of a fair contrast. I don't wanna go over the top with the right-hand side. So don't expect it to be crazy. I just want it to mirror it quite nicely and i gotta say switching over to these it is just so good because really you can't appreciate these higher quality markers until you've used the bad ones literally like two seconds before it you do notice a difference uh, obviously the alcohol markers they're a lot smoother the color just holds a little bit better they're a bit more vibrant i think well, that's debatable. But yeah, so I hope you sort of see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to keep everything just sort of mirrored and, you know, accurate from one side to the other side. Just, uh, so I, I don't know, how can I explain this really? The light source, I guess, is the best way. The light source is sort of coming from the front, aimed at him, so it sort of keeps everything proportionately shadowed. Yeah. Uh, working with the blues is like my favorite thing to do in the world. I love working with the blues. They just work so well. And I mean, I can make all the mistakes in the world with the blue. It's so easy to cover up. So I just love working with blue. Now, pro markers and brush markers. I should probably mention a little bit about these things. And um, yeah, the reason I use them is just because they're just so cheap. I mean, in some retailers, you can get them for as low as two euros, which is like two dollars fifty something like that per pen which is crazy cheap a full set will run you around five hundred dollars but yeah i mean they're pretty good right in terms of the quality i mean they are flawless the the ink quality is fantastic if you use the brush marker, it's just such a joy to work with. The brush marker is incredible. The pro markers are fantastic too, although you have to sort of understand the nibs and how to work with those bullet nibs. But the color range is fantastic and they just work so well together. They blend amazingly. Uh, you don't get any sort of reflections out of them. So for example, if you wanna take photos or anything, it doesn't reflect too much. They're quite a matte finish. They are a little fast to dry, but they're not too fast that you can't work with them comfortably. You can take a little bit of leisurely time with them, but I would exercise caution with that. Don't leave some areas too long if you are planning on blending or anything like that. It just see how it goes. So, I mean, I, I don't really have much more to say here. I'm probably going to just, like, shut up and let the video finish because that's what I do. And I will catch you at the end of the video where we're going to review the whole thing when it's complete, which I'm hoping is going to be soon because it's getting late and I've been working on this all day. So, see you in a moment.
Hey, it's finished. Here we go. It looks pretty good, right? I actually... You know what? What is your favorite side? I need you guys to comment down below which side do you prefer because I'm actually leaning a little bit more towards the left hand side, the cheap ones. I mean, in terms of the quality, the pro markers, brush markers, head and shoulders above them. They just dominate in terms of the quality. The colors are smoother, they blend, they're just fantastic to use. They're cheap, they're just, hey, incredible. But these really cheap ones, if you can kind of like figure out a way to work with them, they're pretty good too. And I think the style that I went for here, this sort of weird blending kind of patchy style, it looks all right. And on contrast, I mean, I do sway a little bit more to it, which again goes back to that magpie effect I was saying. It's brighter and by definition, it means it's better, right? I don't know. Hey, if you want my vote, I prefer the left hand side. Which one do you prefer? Leave a comment down below. And with all that being said, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who has been watching my videos and supporting my channel lately because it has just been incredible. We are gaining so many subscribers lately. The interaction has just been mind-blowingly awesome and I apologize for being away for two weeks. But as I say, I was getting married, I was on a honeymoon and I am back. I missed you guys so much. I hope you missed me and I look forward to creating some more content for you in the upcoming weeks. So, with all that being said, <laughs> I never know how to say goodbye. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.